Yeah. So, um, so there's a guy named Francisco Torrent Guasp. This is a picture of him here. He's a Spanish cardiologist, and he spent years puzzling over the idea that the heart could possibly, with its little pump, push blood out to the 60,000 miles uh, that's estimated of blood vessels, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, and, and this is especially true because blo blood is very viscous, very viscous. In fact, it's more viscous than ferrofluid. And if you, if you look at ferrofluid, it's great for vi visualizing you know, the, the magnetic toroid, right? Anybody yeah, who's gone yeah. in, into Ken Wheeler's work has, has visualized this. And if you look at blood vessels, they have a very, or blood vessels and, and specifically red blood cells, they have a very interesting shape, don't they? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Like and so I, I believe they're being uh, propelled, you know, dielectrically or electromagnetically, whatever you want to, mm. terminology you want to use through the blood vessels of the body. I don't believe they're being pushed and neither did Francisco Torrent Guasp. And that was what he puzzled over because if you think yeah. about it from a, from a plumbing perspective, it makes absolutely no sense that no, with this little pumping motion, 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 the blood is going to go out to trillions of cells and then it's just going to passively return to the heart in order to it's be pumped come, out yeah, again, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, and, and also like the pressure, like as it goes out, the, um, the veins are in ever, well, um, capillaries are in ever decreasing sizes so the press has got to put pump more exactly. and more, and more. Yeah. so you have a viscous fluid that's going into ever narrowing pipes so anyone mm. who's studied plumbing i'm sure if paul cook looked into this with his plumbing <laughs> yeah. background he'd be like yeah that makes no sense at all so he mm. puzzled over yeah. this and yeah. so did a lot of people yeah. for for centuries there were you know the prevailing model is still taught in schools that it is a four chamber pump oh. and uh this video is really worth viewing because it'll change your this, whole perception about everything you know about a whole lot of different things. Um, exactly. Our understanding of water, our mind. understanding of blood and uh, blood flow, and most of all, our understanding of the, the physical nature of the heart, mm. which is way, way beyond anything we could have possibly dreamed of. And Francisco Torrent Guas, this cardiologist, is, is the one that um, he's, he proved this un undoubtedly. Uh, and just, you'll see yeah. why in a moment. Um, so this blew my mind so when you're watching these guys just remember that we're taught something our whole lives and we're we're told that it's it's information that's come from experts who have spent all this time researching and researching and they're giving us the truth and and all the all scientists the, are in agreement the, about yeah all, so it's in all the books it's taught in the universities the schools you're not allowed to question it or you're you know you're a freak um but when you yeah. see this this video that we're about to show um this will this will change your your brain like it just will yeah it was it's it, my brain just went what when i saw this so what he discovered was that that the heart is what he describes as a helical band this is this is the man right there francisco torrent gloss and i'm talking about the reason i made this video was not just to share his work because it was so mind blowing but i had had so many synchronicities that were stacking up about about these these rocks and I kept finding them in the most unusual moments at times when I had specific thoughts. So there's the sulcus line. You can see the little indentation at the top. Now, finding a rock like that might not be so, such a big deal, but it's happening in, in moments where it's like the only rock around. And I'm looking down in a moment that I have a particular thought in my mind. And that thought coincides with something where I'm, you know, asking a question in my mind. And all of a sudden there's a rock that's like answering the question. Does that make sense? So that's yeah, yeah. that's where synchronicity ties into a whole lot of the work that I've presented, and um, this this is especially true when it comes to um, this this man's work. So I highly recommend this video about his life, the helical heart. Uh, he was he was truly a gift to humanity, and most people still don't know about him. Most cardiologists go through school and they just get a little bit of information maybe about this, and then they just move on. And and most of cardiology still hasn't adapted itself to this knowledge, which is a, a crime. So this is yeah. what I was showing before, um, where the heart. See how it's twisting on contraction there. Yep. All right. Look at that again. That's that twist at the bottom of the stones that I'm talking about. Yep. This portion here burns away. The heart shape, you have the openings are actually, this is separated and then there's openings in there between this and this, right? And all of this is gone. And the reason it's gone, which I've started to say multiple times, the boiled egg theory, 
So the bones are gone, I believe, because they're just being annihilated. It gets it, it you know, it goes down to bone broth, mm, yeah, brain, yeah. Brain, brains and skulls as well. Though there are some few examples of petrified brain, uh, we're not taught that that if this is true, that many many stones have a top and a front. They have an orientation because they're not pieces of larger broken structures. They're actually petrified organs. And I believe that a great many of the, what we call the pebbles and the, the stones that you see in rivers and shorelines, that they're not that shape because they've been eroded by water. They've gathered there and there has been some water erosion. And you can see what the water erosion looks like to these stones. Speed it up a little bit. And this just blew my mind away, especially when you think there's people doing open heart surgery and they don't even know what the heart is. It's bizarre. Yeah. This literally changes everything we know about cardiac surgery. Well, so yeah. this is, you see the spiral in the fibers? Yeah. <laughs> and, and the heart was known affectionately as the Gordian knot. And, and in, uh, in mythology, the Gordian knot was supposedly sliced open by Alexander the Great. And the, the story was that whoever could solve the Gordian knot would, uh, would then be the king of Macedonia. He just took out his sword and sliced his sword it and chopped it. I know, right? right? right. He so, cheated. Yeah, he cheated. But uh, they're like, well, the, the knot doesn't exist anymore. So I guess that makes him king or something. But yeah. So what are we looking at there? Is that actually from, is that? This is the heart fibers, which. I it is heart you. fibers. Okay, actual yeah. heart fibers. So, okay. so if you, let me just show. It's easier. So they put the in a solution and got rid of everything else pretty much. So yeah, that's exactly what he did. He boiled the hearts and then carefully removed the outer layer of fat with a scalpel. So he hasn't sliced into the heart muscle fibers at all. He's just removed the fat. This is a cross section of the heart and looking from above down. And you can already make out the spiral fibers, right? Yeah. And, and then this is him at the University of Salamanca in Spain. And he had these radical ideas. He said that it can't be a pump. There's no way it can be a pump because of this viscosity thing we were talking about before and the narrowing yeah. tubes. There's got to be some other thing that's, that's, uh, I just got to show you right there. Remember all those lines I was talking about, the sulcus lines? You're going to see these yeah. again in a second. But I have so many examples of rocks with these. So you've got the harp shape, you've got indentations, you've got the curved underside, you've got the twisting bottom, and you've got the lines there. Tell me that isn't a lot of coincidences for a single rock. This mm -hmm. guy, is he became one of the premier cardiac surgeons in the world because he discovered the works of, of, uh, of Francisco Torrent Guasp and he brought them into the mainstream consciousness and uh, eventually started to create some surgical methods that, that were way more successful. He's probably saved a lot of lives because of that incorporation. And, and I know one cardiologist has reached out to me and you know it's still hardly even taught in the school books wow so basically this is all based on the the heart's not pumping the blood it's pumping but it's not pumping the blood around the the, the body yeah so uh, he theorized that there was some kind of a, a like a, a twisting helical um action happening and uh once he discovered the actual shape and that it was this this, what he calls the myocardial ventricular band, which is also known as the helical heart. And you're going to see him right here. There he's showing the sulcus line. And, and uh, they go into a bit of an explanation about all the stuff that I've been describing. And here he's literally bluntly dissecting it with his fingers. He's not even using a scalpel. And he's literally pulling the heart apart <sighs> until he gets to this one point right there where he's, he uses his scalpel just to make a little cut and then boom he unvent un unban heart. unravels the myocardial ventricular band there and then he rolls guys. it back your heart up is a tube your heart is a tube it's a tube <laughs> it's heart heart in nature it. yeah when we think about you know electromagnetism, <laughs> a lot of people have been looking at at uh you know electricity and and how how you know dielectricity and magnetism a lot of people have been pondering this picture a lot lately, right? You've got this spiraling in and yep. spiraling out in both halves. And then the green line would be the, the dielectric inertial plane, also known as the accretion disk. And then you've got your point of singularity here. Well, guess what? This is exactly how 
our hearts function. It's, it's toroidal, it's fractal in nature, just like our blood vessels and, uh, you know, electromagnetic. These are just some different pictures that uh, are looking at the mathematics. But, you know, something akin to this is in your chest. And interestingly enough, what does it look like? It looks like a toroid, right? And, and it mm. looks a lot like one of those red blood cells that I showed you before. So yeah. this ties into the whole as above, so below. You turn exactly. this thing on its yeah. side, there's your singularity right there, right? And you have these, these, this, the spiraling in and out uh, of oh, both sides, yeah, yeah. you know? So, if, so Anthony Peratt, he's got uh, all kinds of interesting theories that have to do with um, rapid petrification. There's a guy named Mungo Jupp who's done videos with um, uh, Thunderbolts Project as well. Yep. Um, looking at things like fulgurites, these things that form when electricity or uh, when lightning hits sand. Oh, um, this yeah. is an art artificial fulgurite that's been uh, created using high voltage. Wow, Carl! This is this is looking at that um, the 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 heart uh -huh. again, and and there's a spiraling there, and um, and then I think this is looking above, and so if we go back to that video, and uh, and look at at it. So basically, the design of the heart is a spiral in and a spiral out. Um, yeah, to, to so create. It's an energy thing. It's, yeah. yeah, it's like a dual road, you know, um, dual fun vortex going in yeah, opposite yeah. directions. And yeah. um, and if you look at the works of, of Vic Victor Schauberger, they tie in perfectly with all of this. So that's what I talk about in this video is the connections between Schauberger, mm. the works of uh, Francisco Doran Quasp. I've, I've seen no exam uh, nothing to show that that either. Well, that that Guasp knew anything about um, Schauberger's work. But, um, you know, it, it's basically I mean, teaching us the we, same things. Yeah, we see this it all the time, though, with these, you know, intelligent um, researchers. They all, all come up with the same conclusions. The ones that, you know, don't don't go the mainstream route and stick to their, their guns. They all come yeah. up with the same conclusion. Yeah, exactly. So, this is the this is the cosmic the cosmic model. Right. And, and this yeah, occurs yeah. fractally across across levels, uh, which I would show a bunch of cool pictures right now, but I can't. So. Mm, and of course, that even ties back to the you know titans to giants to humans. It's like fractal, right? We're all sort of born from the the blood, if you want, the bones of the predecessors. Yeah. So here's how water is functioning, and this is exactly what our heart is doing in in two directions. Um, and uh, and so, so obviously, as well, the heart also generates the um, you know the magnetic field, the aura, right? So. Um, this that, is sped that up, makes obviously. sense as well that it is a, a vortex, yeah. you know, an energy yeah, creative it's, center. That, that's what you were talking about, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. So it's all coming from the center and it's all yeah. energy. I mean, this is what <laughs> they teach us. They try and teach us everything's little, you know, physical balls, you know, and, and all these little things that everything's mechanical. But yeah, if you think of it as a cymatic utterance of the, the Godhead which I, I've been calling it lately. And each and every one of us is one of those. And then each and every cell, and it goes down, you know, probably atoms mm. as well, whatever those are, I would suspect they're probably toroids as well. There's a, there's a astrologer known, uh, named Dane Rudyard who once described our physical reality as a hierarchical series of interpenetrating holes, spelled W-H-O-L-E. Uh -huh. and, and that would make a lot of sense if you're thinking about all the different ways in which cells come together to form tissues and then to form organs which an organ is a whole unto itself it has its individual function but it participates in the greater whole that's our body and mm. uh and and so that you know and then it goes up to society culture world you know all all, all this this fractal as above so below stuff so here's here's harry harry potter fighting it out with voldemort mm. and look at what they're showing there this opposite you know the red red, red and blue beam. yeah your red shift and all that so i think i think they're showing us all kinds of different uh truths well, this in is plain the thing. Sight. They, they do show us everything they do tell us if you if you're willing to look like but but if you listen to what they're just putting in front of your face that's all wrong but if you're willing to look and, and really listen they do they, they tell you know they do tell us everything pretty much so yeah. so these are the these are the sprites which have been captured on this is, looks like a painting to me, but they've been captured yeah. on, on film and, you know, both photographic and video. Uh, yeah, yeah. These, these are your Lichtenberg figures. Lichtenberg. I think the Grand Canyon is a giant one of these. 
So whether that was some kind of gigantic mining operation from a fractal level up, or whether it was formed by the plasma Phoenix event, I don't know, but the, the traces of it are, are all over our realm. And yeah. Uh, so, yeah. And, and then, then you've got the mythical component of that, which is, is this what they're trying to tell us with Cthulhu and Davy Jones and Medusa and all of these highly destructive beings in mythology, Kali the Destroyer, uh, you know, and then this ties into Melt, obviously. Um, yeah. So, you know, and, and, you know, some things do look like melted buildings. I mean, this could be a slag heap that they carved into, yeah. but I don't think so. I really don't think they carved or, into or it that could be a with bronze age yeah, covered in covered in slag or something and, and uncovered. But yeah, yeah we just like not. Yeah, but and maybe this maybe this is a softer material material to this, and they're able to carefully remove it. You know, hmm. um, I mean, I've seen some pretty bizarre pictures. Paul, Paul Cook again has been showing a few of them of. Well, it looks like they literally just go up and they just pour cement or, you know, some kind of slurry over, over the landscape. <laughs> yeah. They're just artists. It's just bizarre. Totally. The geopolymers, you know, it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. so obvious. There's a two-part series by uh, Observation Deck on, on geopolymers that's, that's absolutely amazing. Uh, everyone should okay. see that because and, – and the work that Paul Cook has been showing. This guy learned how to – just copying a tornado – Looking at this vortexing, he copied Schauberger's work. This is a little plastic thing at the bottom that's like a few inches long. And he starts moving millions of gallons of water with this little tiny device. Uh, it was a big problem for these tanks where they couldn't have stagnant fluids, you know, having to keep rotating and moving the fluids throughout the, throughout yeah. the liquids. So, you know, vortexing technology is what they're using in our jets. Um, you know, it's it's um, mm. it's how everything grows, as you're seeing here, and and then you know, getting back to the heart. So this is this and it is charges uh, everything too, doesn't it? Charges water when you vortex it. So here, what they did is they blew up a cow's heart. Yeah, the charging, the move, yeah, and the movement and breathing and all these things. They ox the oxygenation of the blood by our by our respiration, um, and and you can see I've got it sped up too much here but um if you, if you look at this going back um a touch as they blew up this heart and then shrank it down they can expand oh, it wow. and you can see yeah, the wow. opposite rotating vortexes yeah. so so francisco uh guas theorized that and then one once upon a time he saw that video and he saw some other video where they're looking at um positronic emission so this is, you know, back to the myocardial band. And uh, basically, so if you, if you think of that tube, the electrical impulses are going from one end of this tube to the other. And then because of the nature of how that's rolled up, it gives us the four chambers, but it also gives us this dual rotating spiral uh, mm -hmm. vortexing blood flow. <laughs> yeah. Totally, totally far out stuff. Um, so it's, it's, it's probably more of like a blood cleaner than a pump. I mean, yes. that's what you do with and water, that's, right? That's what we see with the work of Schau, yeah. Schauberger. So you're getting, yeah, exactly, you're getting yeah. a, it's a, it's a uh, implosion technology, you could say, because it's centripetal force and it's increasing until it gets to a point of probably, you know, uh, in, in sonoluminescence, it's cavitation, right? That's actually giving rise to these stars in the jar. But, mm, but yeah. in us, it's, it's creating this actual suction and then the, the blood is literally uh, shot and propelled through the bloodstream. And I think it's almost like some kind of a quantum locking that's happening because of the toroidal shape of the cell, the blood cells. And if you think about the, um, you know, the, the, the blood vessel shape again, and that, that magnetic toroid shape, uh, there's probably some kind of a, you know, um, what do you call it? The, uh, well, I, I said it already, this quantum locking, there's, there's something happening with the fourth stage of water, which is structured water. And then you have the viscosity and you have the, the iron that's in the red blood. Um, so, there, yeah, it's going to take people smarter than I did to, to put all these these puzzle bits together. Um, yeah. I mean, the fact that, it's, that, that there's iron in it too, you know, it could be magnetics in there as well. Yeah. And this was that this was the last thing. This was the final nail in the coffin that absolutely proved his theories. This is positronic emission, and there, this is double speed, but you can see uh, even there, 
that um, yeah and you can see the twisting of the heart there as it's still pumping inside the body and there's your twisting so it's been it's been confirmed a variety of different ways but none of us are taught in our schools i wasn't taught in chiropractic college this was a big no. deal uh and and francisco guasp gave his um his last uh speech in madrid after 25 years of trying to wake people up to this people finally started to catch on to it and he went to madrid and he gave this um <clears throat> this talk and uh it was in front of a, a whole room filled filled with cardiologists and then at the end of the the speech it was standing ovations and he went back to his his hotel room you know content for having finally been recognized by his peers after after decades and uh died of a heart attack that night Oh, so that, no. that, was, that was kind of a tragic uh, ending. Some, some suspect foul play and maybe the CIA heart gun or whatever. But um, Well, yeah. I mean, well, this is the thing, you know, discoveries like this, I mean, that would cost Big Pharma billions. Yeah. And so so I theorize also when I saw him open up the heart. Yeah. I mean, think of think of how many. Tr it's probably trillions at this point. Trillions. When you yeah. look at all the blood, uh, the heart pressure medication, the beta blockers yep. and the, all this stuff. Um, yep. And when he goes to fold this up right here, there's a little half twist. And that's what a Mobius strip is. It's a flattened band with a half twist yep. that's, that meets at the ends. And yep. so um, I, what is a Mobius strip? It's, that's what I start this video with. Um, oh, it's not coming up here. I don't want to skip because I'm going to show this. But the Mobius strip is basically a three-dimensional one-sided object where, yep. where it's it, – you you follow one side around and you end up right back where you came, came from. So there you see the lines and you, you see the, the heart and the structure of the heart. So the, every single aspect of everything that I've talked about, and there's your, there's your suture line, there's your blood vessel opening. Every single aspect of heart anatomy and function and physiology that I've just shown you, I've found in, in the rocks and I found it in spades. I literally have hundreds of examples. Um, wow. Yeah, so I talked about the um, Mobius strip. So there's that half twist there. Oh, there's a Mobius strip there. Yeah, yeah. this is a triple strip. Um, yeah, yeah, so that's, this yeah, is, yeah. This is the idea. So I, I've theorized that the heart is a Mobius strip and that and that it's actually the blood is being propelled through this thing in in this toroidal fashion, uh, but it's, it's happening electromagnetically and maybe it's some kind of quantum locking or maybe it has to, it's something to do with the dielectric plane. Um, and so if you when you look at him unravel here he's when he goes to fold it back up he starts oh. by making a half twist there mm. there and then it rolls up into this this knot so uh there there's the half twist so that, that's, uh, yeah, that's the yeah. Mobius twist yep which basically think. means you can have two currents or two opposite charges running on the on the strip at the same time right right on opposite sides yeah, and so anyone who's gone into Ken Wheeler's work or the Primer fields, I highly recommend P R I M E R. Those those four videos that guy did will just blow your mind. 